Let us pray. Jesus is Alpha, Alpha and Omega. Jesus is Alpha, Alpha, Omega. So I praise Him for His Alpha, Alpha and Omega. So I praise Him for His Alpha. Alpha and Omega, Jesus, Jesus is Alpha. Alpha and Omega, Jesus, Jesus is Alpha. Alpha and Omega, so I praise Him for His Alpha. Alpha. And Omega, so I praise Him for His Alpha, Alpha, and Omega. Like Him, I want to be, to be forever. Like Him, I want to be, to be forever. So I praise Him for His Alpha, Alpha and Omega. So I praise Him for His Alpha, Alpha and Omega. Father Almighty, we bless your holy name. We give you all glory and honor for the youth convention of the previous years. Thank you for marvelous things you've done for us in the past. And thank you in advance for this glorious one that is a unique one. The first one we are doing uh, just in virtual form so that we can reach the whole world even more effectively. We are very, very grateful. Please accept our worship in Jesus' name. For that we are praying that in a very, very special way tonight, you will bless all your youth, you will bless all the young adults, and you will bless even those of us who are their parents. We pray, Lord God Almighty, that at the end of it all, you, the great, bright and money star would transform us so that we too will become great and mighty money star in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. We want to give the Almighty God glory for the lives of our youth and young adults. We thank God that it has pleased him to let you know him even while you are young. Now, those of us who came to know him a bit uh, late in, the, in life, we are grateful to him for knowing him at all. But uh, a lot of wounds have been healed since we came to know him, but the scars remain. And we thank God that in your own case, you are knowing him early, so you, you, your scars will be less. As you know very well, our theme for this year's youth convention is the bright and morning star. We'll be reading from Revelation chapter 22, verse 16. Revelation 22, verse 16. Jesus Christ was speaking, and he said, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, and the bright and morning star. We will read also Revelation chapter 2, 
Revelation chapter 2 and we'll be reading from verse 25 to 29 Revelation chapter 2 from verse 25 to 29 but that which ye have already hold fast till I come and he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. And I will give him the money star, Verse 29, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Just one more passage before we begin to talk. The same revelation. Chapter 3, verse 21. Revelation 3. Verse 21, to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and I am set down with my father in his throne. The bright and morning star, that's the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I'm sure we all know that stars are usually seen at night. When the sun is shining, even though the stars are there in the sky, we don't see them. But then, this passage or this very text is telling us that there is a star that can shine so bright that it can be seen during the day. That's why it's called the bright and morning star. It's a star you can see during the day. In any case you don't believe there is such a star, well, ask Saul of Tarsus. He will tell you when he was on the way to Damascus, at noon time, a light shone from heaven, brighter than the noonday sun that knocked him down from his horse. So we're about to talk about a star that can be seen during the day. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, I am that star, bright and morning star. That's what we, that's how he introduced himself in Revelation 22 verse 16. But then he said in Revelation chapter 2 from verse 25 to 29 that I read to you, he said, he that overcometh, I will give him the money star. How does that mean? Does he, is he saying, I will give him myself? No, he's simply saying, if you overcome, I will let you join my club. You two can be in the club of the bright and money star. Which leads us to the question, how then do I overcome? So that I can be in that club. We, that's why we read Revelation chapter 3, verse 21. He that overcometh shall sit with me on my throne, even as I overcame, and I am set down with my father on his throne. So what is he saying? 
Yeah, I am the bright and morning star. If you overcome, you will join my club. How do you overcome? Like I overcame. What that one leads to is simple. If you want to join the club of the bright and morning star, study the lifestyle of Jesus. Find out how he overcame. What are the characteristics of this person who is called the bright and morning star? Let's study his lifestyle together in the next few minutes. Of course, it's not possible to exhaust all, but let's take the cogent ones so that we will know how to live our lives from now on so that at the end of the day, we'll be in the club of the bright and morning star. First, his lifestyle is a life of fasting. Matthew chapter 4, from verse 1 to 2. Matthew 4, 1 to 2. The very first thing that happened after God pronounced him, after baptism, as my beloved son, in whom I were pleased, was that he went into the wilderness to fast for 40 days and 40 nights. I'm sure you've heard of uh, somebody who said, Lord, I want to do the works that you did. He said, fine, I want you to do it. Okay, when can I start? Ah, just start from where I started. I started my fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. That's the beginning. All the major stars that you can find in the Bible Stars that are recognized all over the world are fast stars. Moses, Exodus 24, verse 18. Exodus 24, verse 18. Fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And today, Moses is recognized at least in three religions. In Judaism, in Christianity, and in Islam. How did they start? They fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Elijah, 1 Kings chapter 19, from verse 4 to 8. 1 Kings chapter 19, 4 to 8. He traveled for 40 days and 40 nights after taking a set of meals. Even just at the time when he thought that his life should be terminated. Paul the Apostle, who wrote most of the New Testament, said in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27, 2 Corinthians 11, verse 27, he said, I fasted often. I fasted often. So please listen to me, my children. You want to shine? Get ready for a lifestyle of fasting. Regular fasting. Long fasting. Number two, prayer. I'm talking of his lifestyle now, but you become your own lifestyle from now on. He was always praying. 
Why? In John chapter 5, verse 19, John 5, verse 19, he said, The son can do nothing except he sees what the father is doing. John chapter 5, verse 19. In Mark chapter 1, verse 35, Mark 1, 35, the Bible says, Very early in the morning, long before daybreak, he will go to pray alone. Oh, praying together is wonderful. I mean, there is tremendous power in corporate prayer. But we are talking about you who will want to excel. You want to shine as a bright and morning star. Oh, while others are sleeping. You'll be awake and praying. And you know what that one means? You have to sacrifice that long period that you spend before television set. In, Mark chapter, in Matthew 14, verse 23, Matthew 14, verse 23, he said, when he had sent the people away, he went to the mountain to pray and was there alone. We're talking now about personal prayer, your own praying alone. There was, or oh, there is this uh, mighty saying that I learned um, in the early 1950s from a book called uh, John Plowman's Talks. I don't know if the book is here available. Check. If you can see, find that book. Buy it and read it. It helped me tremendously. It is there that there was this little poem. It says, The height by great men reached and kept we are not attained by sudden flight. But they, while their companions slept, were toiling upward in the night. The height by great men reached and kept. We are not attained by sudden flight. Some of you think you can get to the top overnight. That man says, no, no, it doesn't happen that way. He said, while their companions were sleeping, they were toiling upward in the night. Not just to get to the top, but to stay there requires toiling up in the night. Beloved children, I know there are some of you who probably have said at one time or the other, why is daddy still fasting and praying? You believe, oh, your daddy is the greatest. He has reached the top. Well, let us thank you for uh, your good opinion about your daddy. But it's one thing to reach the top. It's another thing to stay there. He kept praying. Hello, in the Garden of Gethsemane, Luke chapter 22, verse 44. Luke 22, verse 44. The Bible says, He was praying so hard that he was sweating blood. Now that's some serious prayer. <laughs> and he was alone praying there. Oh, he took some three hefty men with him. Peter, James, and John. Hey, come along. Let, let's go into this garden. But when he got to a certain stage, he said, you wait here. And then he went further on to go and pray. Listen to me, my children. Nobody can pray for you like you can pray for yourself. Nobody. Nobody. 
Oh, oh, I know the Bible says this. Any sick among you, let them send for the elders. Praise God for the elders. But elders does not mean old age. And the people that you will say should be praying for you might fall asleep. <laughs> They fell asleep on the Lord Jesus Christ himself. It's the one who is carrying the body. Who will know what body is carrying? Is the one who is suffering. Who will know where he's suffering? Is the one whose shoe is pinching. Who will know where the shoe pinches? Nobody can pray for you like yourself. And not casual prayer this time. Rigorous. Prayer. That's why you need to be alone when you are praying. It. In Luke chapter 11, verse 1, in Luke chapter 11, verse 1, the Bible says the, the disciples were watching the Lord Jesus Christ every time. He would wake up early in the morning, he would go and pray. Many at times, when the disciples would wake up, they would be looking for him. Where is he? He's going to pray. So the Bible says, on one occasion, when they have they must have been watching him from afar. When they saw he has finished praying, they came to him and said, teach us to pray. <laughs> there must be something in this thing you do every day. There must be something in it. Teach us to pray. Praying can be learned. When I first became a Christian, born again, in the Redeemed Christian Church of God, I came from a denomination where the reverend will read the prayer and the rest of us will answer Amen. Then I joined the Redeemed Christian Church of God and I came among people who pray as if uh, their lives depend on it. And now I know my life depends on prayer. And in those days, when the service is over, as soon as they finish the preaching, they ask you to go and pray. And nobody will disturb you. You pray until you are satisfied. And I will kneel down and pray like other people. At least I will kneel down when they were all leading, kneeling down. And my prayer in those days, very short, Lord. Uh, you know why I'm here? I have a problem which I want you to solve for me. If you solve the problem, I will come and give you thanksgiving. And so solve the problem quickly so that I can come and say thank you quickly. I hope you understand. And then I will add, Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I will go through that. And then I will lift up my head, and nobody, nobody is lifting up his or her head yet. And I don't want to be the first one to go. So I put my head down and repeat what I have already said, and lift up my head again. After some time, I decided, what's wrong with me? I was already a lecturer in the university. I'm supposed to be learned. Because most of the people around me then were illiterates. There must be something, these people, why, how, how do they pray like this? And I noticed one particular fellow who was very good. So I made up my mind, I will learn how to pray. So I come to church very early, notice where he's sitting, and sit next to him. And I began to see that this man will spend about the next, the first 30 minutes just praising God. And I was just copying whatever I was saying. Almighty God, I was Almighty God. There is no one like you. I would say, There is no one like you. You made heaven and not you. You made heaven and not. And I was serious. God knew I wanted to learn how to pray. A time came, I didn't need that man beside my side to know what to say. And I, would, I learned that people were doing vigils in their homes, so I wanted to do vigils. But uh, 
I found that if I knelt down to pray, I woke up the following morning on my knees, falling asleep while I thought I was praying. I tried walking around. It was then I discovered that I can fall asleep walking. I've been walking after some time. I would kneel against the wall and I find myself fully asleep. And it wasn't long after that that I discovered that there's only one way to stay awake while I'm praying at night. That's by climbing the stairs. Go up, come down. Go up, come down. If I dare fall asleep on the stairs, I know I will wake up very soon. Prayer can be learned. Now I can go for hours. That's why I thank God for a redemption camp where I can walk for hours or until I am satisfied. You might not have that opportunity where you are living, but you can climb the stairs. The Lord was always praying for hours. Remember, without him, you can do nothing. John 15 verse 5. Learn to pray. John 15 verse 5. And then, of course, he was full of the word. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 3 to 11, Matthew 4, verse 3 to 11, how did he overcome Satan? By saying again and again and again, it is written. Anytime some people try to catch him, he will reply them by saying, it is written. For example, Matthew chapter 21, from verse 15 to 16, Matthew 21, 15 to 16, the Pharisees came to him when they saw the children shouting, Hosanna, etc. They said, hey, wait a minute. Uh, what, what's wrong? Can't you hear what these people are saying? Uh, uh, don't you think they are making you God? He said, have you not read? That out of the mouth of sucklings and babies, thou hast perfected He coached the word to them. And they, they, they had no answer to that. In Matthew chapter 21, from verse 12 to 13, Matthew 21, from verse 12 to 13, when he got into the temple and he found those who were buying and selling, and he drove them out, overturned their tables, and some people were about to say to him, ah, but you call yourself a man of God. You call yourself a preacher. How can you be doing this in the house of God? He said, it is written, my house shall be called the house of prayer. Quoting the word, meeting them, by telling them what is written. Why must you be full of the word? Why must you keep on not just reading it, not just meditating, but memorizing it? Psalm 119 verse 11. Psalm 119 verse 11 says, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. He was a man of the word. That's how he became an overcomer. That's what you must do too. Number four. He was always full of gratitude. Every time he wanted to do anything at all, he gave thanks, 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 thanks. In John chapter 6, from verse 5 to 13, John 6, 5 to 13, when he was going to feed 5,000 people with the lunch of a small boy, he took the food in his hand, he gave thanks. He gave thanks. In John chapter 11 verse 39 to 45, John 11 from verse 39 to 45, when he was going to perform what many people consider to be his greatest miracle, raising 
a man who had been dead for four days. He said, Father, I thank you. <laughs> Before the miracle, Father, I thank you. In Matthew 11, from verse 25 to 26, Matthew 11, 25 to 26, he, when he was talking about several things that some people were supposed to know that they don't know, he said, Father, thank you for hiding this thing from these people. This mysteries of the kingdom, you decided to hide it from them. He said, because that is what you want. That's, that's, it was so good, like this. He was always giving thanks. At the Last Supper, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, from verse 23 to 24, 1 Corinthians 11, from verse 23 to 24, the Bible said, he took the bread and gave thanks. So always giving thanks. Always giving thanks. People say, sir, why do you spend so much time before any service? Worshipping God. Praising Him. I always buy. I wish they, they were with me in my prayer room. They would have known how many hours I've gone into saying, thank you. It is when you are grateful that you can receive more blessings. When you are grateful. You remember the first time we had the Holy Ghost service in Abuja when we were about to start uh, our branch of the church there. And we were going to conduct a Holy Ghost service and I was staying in an hotel and I locked myself up. I was praying, God, you, you must do marvelous things. It was to be a three-day program. Save souls, Lord. Heal the sick demonstrate your power. And all of a sudden, he spoke to me and said, shut up. And of course, I've told you before, I was glad when I, when I heard that at least it meant he has heard me. <laughs> Do this for me. Do that one for me. Am I your houseboy? All the things I've done for you in the past, how many thanks have you given? Oh, he said, for the next three days, I don't want to hear anything from you other than thanksgiving, praise, worship. Ah, okay. Thank you, Lord. It was very hard because we just love to ask. We don't like to thank him. Oh, Lord God Almighty, thank you for what you have done in the past. Blessed be your name. But don't forget this evening, sir, shut up. Thank me. After three days, towards the end of the program, he said, all right now, go home, tell your elders, appoint elders, and let them go and begin to strengthen the foundation of the church. He said, because whatever you have seen, those wise addition, I'm about to begin our multiplication. Learn to be grateful. It is clear, many of, of us young ones nowadays, we don't even know the meaning of gratitude. When we were growing up, whenever somebody gives us something, our parents would say, and what should you say? They teach us to be grateful. Learn to be grateful. Because in Psalm 50 from verse 14 to 15, Psalm 50 from verse 14 to 15, you want to know the secret of victory? The Almighty God said, first of all, come with thanksgiving, pay your vow, and then call on me in the day of trouble. And I will answer you. Number five of his lifestyle. He was a man under authority. You know, he had said that me and my father are one. He said it himself. He said, we're equal. 
After all, it is written, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. I'm the Word, and with my Father from the beginning, we are equal. <laughs> but if you read Luke chapter 7, from verse 2 to 10, Luke 7 from verse 2 to 10, when that centurion came to him for the healing of his servant, and he said, I will come to your house and come and heal. The new centurion said, hey, no, 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 no. You don't, need, you don't need to come to my house. I also am a man under authority. You know the meaning of also? It means you are under authority. I'm under authority. The two of us, we are equal in that. I'm under the authority of Caesar. That is why when I say to this soldier, go, he goes. When I say to him, come, he comes. You are under the authority of your father in heaven. Just speak a word. And my servant will be whole. You don't need to come to my house. We know the power of the almighty God in heaven. Yeah, you are under his authority. Speak a word. And the sickness and demons will disappear. A man under authority. In John chapter 14 verse 10, John 14 verse 10, he said, The Father who sent me does the work. Anything you see me achieving, he said, oh, it's not me. It's the one who sent me. In Luke 22, verse 42, Luke 22, verse 42, in, in, the, in, in his greatest hour of trial now, he said, I know, Father, you have the ability to remove this cup from me, but... Not my will, but thine be done. Not my will, but thine be done. Absolute submission. And when you see some people being mightily used of God, check. There are men and women who have discovered the power of being under authority. Nowadays, the young ones don't want to be under the authority of anybody. That's why there are so many general overseers all over the world. People who should be Sunday school teachers. Under the authority of somebody. And no, they don't want anyone commanding them, telling them, do this, do that. No, they want to do their own thing. Forgetting that, like somebody said, the tail of a lion is more powerful than the head of a dog. But just the, at the tail, the very tail end of a lion, <laughs> you command greater respect than if you are the head of a dog. But let anybody touch the tail of a lion. You have the lion to deal with. When I was a young fellow like you, um, I mean, I'm so young, it's just that youth is coming, <laughs> it's, it's relative. I never did anything without the permission of my father in the law. And I give you an example. When I was at the University of Illinois, we were talking with, at a workers' meeting one day, and the, I didn't know what led to it. I just mentioned a particular town in Kuala State where there was no church. Eh? None at all. They said none at all. I said, ah, glory be to God. Here comes a church. Why is there no church? They said, if you go there to witness, they will stone you. I said, good. What did I do? I traveled straight to Lagos. I came to my father in the Lord. I said, I learned that there is this town. I don't want to mention the name now. Where they said, there's no church. I want to go there and witness. Should I go? 
You come for your permission. <laughs> My father in the Lord laughed and said, you don't need to ask for my permission. The permission is already given. Hey, thank you. I got back home, gathered the young ones together. My wife is there who could testify. And we invaded the town. Oh, we have not been in the town. We were going from house to house. We have not been in the town for 30 minutes when we got a summon from the ballet or whoever was the leader. What are you people doing in my town? I, I, I said, we're not worried. We brought you good news. We were just telling you good news. All is going to be well with you in this town. The Prince of Peace is here. Oh, is that it? That's it, sir. That's all. We're not fighting anybody. He said, go. So we went. About an hour later, another summer. We have been told that you are disturbing the peace. No, we? To cut a long story short, that place now is a provincial headquarters. But I had the boldness to go because I'm under the authority of someone who said, go. The Lord was a man under authority. That's why <laughs> he was so victorious. Another fellow who was under authority like that was Paul the Apostle. You know this story. In Acts chapter 19 from verse 11 to 17, Acts 19 from verse 11 to 17, he was performing mighty miracles. His, his handkerchiefs were casting out demons, etc., etc. And uh, some people thought, well, we know he's just using the name of Jesus. Anybody can call that name. And they, <laughs> they saw a demonized fellow and said, hey, you demons, get out. Ah, the demons said, eh? what do you say? They said, we, in the name of Jesus that Paul preaches, get out. Uh -huh. The devil himself says, Jesus I know. Paul, I know also who are you. You know the rest of the story. But you must remember that this same Paul has said in Philippians 1, from verse 20 to 21, Philippians 1, 20 to 21, he said, Oh, whether I live, I belong to Christ. Whether I die, I belong to him. For me to live is Christ, to die is gain. Total submission. My wife was sharing a testimony some time ago. She went to buy uh, something in uh, a store in the United Kingdom. It, is, it, it requires uh, one, one of the people there to cut through a piece of cloth using scissors. And this is, my wife was holding the piece of cloth on one side, that man was holding the scissors on the other. As the scissors touched the hand of my wife, an electric shock went through the store fellow. I think he dropped the scissors and jacked back. Hey, who are you? <laughs> you know why that happened? My wife is a woman under authority. Mm -hmm. Years ago, there was a group of women who said they were doing women liberation. And they came to my wife. They said, we hear you calling your husband daddy. Uh, no, 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 no. We women, so we, are, we are for liberation. We want to liberate every woman. My wife said, you want to liberate me from what? Want to liberate me from love, from peace and harmony in my home. If you hear me say sir to him, I will say sir again. Go and liberate others. Leave me alone. Beyond authority. 
what the fellow above you might be saying might not be too pleasing to you. Land submission, it gives you power over the devil. It makes you an overcomer. Now, number six. He was active and diligent. The Lord Jesus Christ was not lazy in any way at all. He was always on the move. When you read Mark chapter 5, from verse 2 to the end, Mark 5, from verse 2 to the end, just one chapter will show you the kind of lifestyle he lived. From verse 2 to 15, he performed deliverance for the madman of Gadara. From verse 25 to 34, he healed the woman with the issue of blood. From verse 34 to 43, he raised the dead, Jairus' daughter. All in one day. Deliverance, healing, raising the dead. He kept on moving, moving. He was diligent. Some young people are lazy. They just love to, uh, we are hanging around. We are chilling out. Oh, you shouldn't be chilling. You should be fiery. You should be full of fire. You should always be on, in action. Always in action. He was diligent. He was active. And he said in John chapter 10 from verse 16. Well, let's move. Let's, yeah, we can move it from verse 16 to 18. John 10 from verse 16 to 18. He, he said, hey, I have other people outside this fold, other sheep. On our way to the airport, we have to leave by six because of the traffic in this place. Uh, after about four days, he said, I, I don't think I will ever travel with you again. <laughs> and he was a young man. And one fellow with the place where we stayed for about three days said that, uh, we went to bed around 2 a.m. And you expect us to come for morning devotion at six. And when I don't see them, I phone their room. <laughs> and so he took, he took the, the uh, phone off the hook. <laughs> wow. 
hard work doesn't kill. As a matter of fact, it makes you stronger. Keep working hard. Jesus Christ said, My father walketh either to, and I walk. And then number seven, it was pure. Yeah, they live, he lived a life of purity. The Bible says in Hebrew chapter 4, verse 15, Hebrew chapter 4, verse 15, that he was tempted. Ooh. Who I believe, I hope, I hope they are not among you who said that the way they are, they, they are deviant is because that's the way God made them. Ah, God never made anything evil. He made everything pure. When he was creating man, it was Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. God doesn't make mistakes. If you are rotten, agree you are rotten, and then cry unto him, and he will turn you to a brand new creature. But that you are doing something that is contrary to his will, and you are consoling yourself by saying, that's the way God made me. Huh. That's blasphemy. And when repercussion comes, you alone will carry the body. The Lord lived a life of purity. Purity. That's how he overcame. Just one more, so that you can have time to pray. And that is that he was full of the Holy Spirit. He was full of fire. The Bible says in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, Acts 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. He was full of the Holy Spirit. Full. Not empty. And as we have heard, in the Holy Communion service we had earlier on, to remain full of the Holy Spirit means you just keep on refilling, keep on refilling, keep on refilling, keep on refilling. You're young. Thank God for your youth. You are strong. Thank God for your strength. Pray without ceasing. Learn to be grateful. Learn to fast regularly. The flesh was against the spirit. Subdue the flesh. Fasting clears the way for the Holy Spirit to flow mightily. You should ask me, I know what I'm talking about. You want to operate in high voltage anointing. Learn to fast. And then stay under authority. Remain diligent. Remain pure. And keep on being filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to pray for you now before I release you to go and pray. Because you must pray till you are satisfied tonight. Let us pray. Ancient of days, I want to commit all your children into your hands. They are young. They are strong. They can be mighty vessels unto honor in your hands. I want to thank you that thus far you have helped them. Please, Lord, pick them up from here on and set them on fire for you. Amen. Let this 